Thank you, Sarah. I don't think I need to use this microphone, right? Uh, thank you, and thanks the organizer, and thank you for the effort of pronouncing in almost a French-Italian accent my name. That's a unique success. Um, I uh, try to take away the message of the uh, opening session today uh, on the global impact of regenerative medicine with two main uh, messages. What we need to uh, get this area, this new area of medicine to grow and to succeed, we need uh, a few things, but two were of particular importance to me. One is the demonstration of clear-cut efficacy. The second, uh, the ability to support uh, with appropriate facility this uh, um, growing new field. And uh, what I will try to do in the next uh, 14 minutes and 20 second counting mm -hmm. uh, is to try to convince you that uh, uh, our company, together with many others, of course, uh, is uh, uh, pursuing this uh, finally after a, almost a couple of decades with some significant successes. Although the phase three trial are still coming, uh, uh, Phase two data that have accumulated so far, particularly in rare diseases, but also in cancer, are supporting this optimistic view. Hope you share that. The uh, usual forward-looking statement that you're supposed to read in three seconds. And then uh, quickly on the company. Molmed is an Italian uh, company, is a uh, public company listed on the Milano Stock Exchange. The focus is, as I anticipated, oncology and orphan diseases. We are a bit over 100 people, constantly growing, two-thirds staff scientists. Our core competences, as I mentioned, are recombinant protein to target specific part of the uh, tumor. What I will pre be presenting today is specifically on the tumor vasculature, a phase three study coming up, uh, a registrative study coming up uh, with the uh, uh, results uh, available between the end of December and the beginning of uh, January. Of course, we hope for a good Christmas present. The second part is based on cell and gene therapy. Uh, the TK technology is a cell gene therapy uh, product uh, uh, expected also to file for conditional approval while the phase three trial is ongoing in, uh, uh, before the end of the year. Uh, the expected day should be uh, early December. Uh, there is, in addition to this and derived from our experience in uh, gene therapy, uh, a significant growth of CMO activities where we are expanding know-how, targeting new diseases, and boosting revenues of the company. I will dedicate the second part of my presentation to this uh, uh, because I think some of the results are particularly compelling. So the business model of the company is uh, diversified, of course, because we are addressing uh, uh, relatively uh, rare diseases here on the right uh, and uh, uh, potentially a huge market of uh, 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 cancer targeting approaches, particularly because, as you will see, NGRTNF is targeting uh, uh, a unique structure on the tumor vasculature that is not expressed on the normal vasculature and therefore is potentially applied to any solid tumor with, uh, uh, supported by a neoformation of uh, tumor uh, feeding vasculature. Uh, therefore, uh, the future of this molecule, if the uh, expected results uh, are positive, uh, is to enter into a, a partnership for the uh, development and marketing phase. Cell and gene therapy, as you uh, will see, we have developed uh, know-how, specific know-how, both for what is concerning the technology and the production and development. We have appropriate facilities. We are building uh, new facilities of significant size, uh, and therefore, we plan to develop uh, the uh, cell and gene therapy. In this case, here you see the application of uh, uh, tubal marrow transplantation, but uh, uh, there are a number of uh, additional projects that are following this one uh, that is, as I mentioned, uh, in uh, phase three. Uh, GMP Solution is uh, uh, a partnership uh, uh, based on uh, uh, R&D and production with uh, uh, important partners. Uh, here I made the uh, specific reference to 
the two types uh, that we are interacting the most and the two most important and most prestigious, GSK, uh, we are uh, uh, developing and uh, uh, producing uh, for uh, uh, the uh, registration study uh, for the ADA deficiency, uh, my pet project of many years ago. I'm happy and proud to see that it's finally coming to the demonstration, to a clear demonstration of efficacy. And with the Teleton Foundation, based on similar technologies, both with retroviral vectors and lentiviral vectors for a number of other diseases. Uh, quickly, the advanced clinical development, I already made reference to the gene therapy associated with bone marrow transplantation for high-risk leukemia. It's a phase three study seeking conditional approval while the uh, phase three is ongoing based on uh, uh, fairly compelling phase two data that I will share with you today. And GRTNF is being developed uh, because of the mechanism of action I mentioned before into a number of indications. It has completed in uh, January of 2013, has completed a phase three trial on 400 uh, uh, patients. Uh, uh, results are expected at the end of the year. There are a series of additional indications, all sharing more or less the same type of result uh, that I will uh, uh, share with you uh, so that you have a sense of the type of data that we have obtained. Before going into the results, though, a quick reference to the mechanism of action. Uh, NGRTNF is a, a new technology of targeting peptides, was conceived uh, uh, here, actually, at the Bernard Institute uh, in uh, uh, Santa Barbara before and in San Diego, subsequently by Erke Ruslati and his collaborators, and then taken into our institution in Italy, uh, and then into the company um, by um, Corti and, uh, and Kurnis, who actually built uh, this molecule. We have uh, developed everything from the crystal to the mechanism of action to the binding structure in the tumor site, uh, uh, that's uh, signal transduction into the endothelial cell. Of course, I don't have the time to review all this, but just to give you a couple of essential messages. First, with these peptides, in principle, you can bind to the tumor vasculature because of the specificity of NGR binding the amino peptidase that it's expressed on this form only on the tumor vasculature. It's not expressed at all on other tissue or on the normal vasculature. You can uh, couple almost anything, we, we, chose NG, uh, we, we chose TNF because of its potent anti-tumor activity, but as you will probably know already when it was developed originally, when this was discovered, TNF was abandoned because differently than in rodents, in human is too toxic. Uh, the uh, combination allows you to concentrate the TNF only on the tumor vasculature, and you can utilize the dose indicated here of 0 0.8 uh, uh, microgram per square meter, uh, that's uh, about 200 fold less than what was utilized initially in clinical development. Uh, and you get uh, the same antivascular activity, uh, the same vascular targeting activity without uh, uh, any um, uh, toxicity. With over 700 uh, patients treated uh, with this dose, we have never observed any toxicity. Here it's just a pretty picture to represent the tumor vasculature, uh, specifically stain. Uh, what is the function of this molecule? In essence, uh, you uh, see two effects uh, throughout the different uh, uh, clinical uh, uh, studies. Uh, the, the results I'm reporting here are on uh, the squamous uh, subset uh, histology of non-small cell lung carcinoma. Because of the initial hit, the initial damage to the tumor vasculature, if you combine this, as it has been done in this randomized phase two trial, if you combine it with uh, chemotherapy, you increase the penetration. This was extensively demonstrated for doxorubicin and a number of other chemotherapeutic agents. You definitely increase the penetration of, uh, of the drug. And if you combine them and you compare uh, uh, in, uh, in yellow-orange uh, the uh, combination with NGRTNF with chemotherapy or chemotherapy alone, you see that the uh, reduction uh, uh, with the first cycle, the reduction of the tumor side that you obtain with a combination without any additional toxicity is uh, more than double than what you will obtain. What does this result over time, and we have seen this over and over in phase two trial, is that uh, the overall survival, uh, uh, while uh, uh, the, the median overall survival is extended of over five months in this study, over time, after two and a half years, uh, there is more than a 50% relative reduction of the risk of death. And this is uh, uh, statistically significant, despite the fact that these are phase two trials, so relatively small in number. Uh, 
Okay, um, back to uh, the uh, TK and the uh, cell therapy and, and gene therapy. This is a different targeting, of course. Here, what you want to specifically target is one of the function of the uh, transgene that you are introducing. The application of this technology is for high-risk leukemia. In essence, the ambition is to give a donor to every patient uh, in uh, the um, in a uh, uh, candidate to receive a transplant for high risk leukemia. Uh, the, the unique property of the use of this suicide gene is that uh, essentially you can transplant from an HLA a proidentical donor, so a donor that's available for almost all uh, uh, patients. Uh, um, you have uh, available uh, a, a system by which you can avoid any immune depletion or any immune suppression. <coughs> Very quickly how this works, uh, uh, a patient is undergoing bone marrow transplantation with stem cells, so we reconstitute of all the different lineage, just but the uh, immune system, the immune system comes in with the T cells. Uh, in aplodisparate transplant, uh, like in this case, the immune suppression required will be extreme. We circumvent that by taking the cells, genetically engineered to express a suicide gene, the terminating kinase from there, the name, of the herpes simplex virus, uh, and then you can reinfuse the selected cells. Uh, the patient is receiving a few full immune system able to do all the different functions, but if you get a significant graft versus host disease, you can downregulate specifically the cells that are involved in graft versus host disease uh, uh, with this mechanism. Uh, the mechanism is such, and it was demonstrated in the last paper that we published, the phase two data that I'll show you in a second. Uh, uh, by the specific request of the editor or the reviewer to demonstrate that outside the allo uh, reactivity, the rest of the immune reconstitution was spared. These are the clinical data, and this is the uh, relevant part. Uh, uh, this is the European experience of aplo transplantation in the same period. This is, uh, these are the data of the uh, Lancet Oncology paper. And you see here that we transplant patients of all ages, despite the experimental nature of the transplant. Transplant rated mortality is dropped from 50% to 14%, and uh, four year disease free survival is uh, uh, more than double. Uh, what's important is that in every single case here, and in over 130 patients treated in different trials, uh, not a single case of graft versus host disease could not be controlled by this uh, mechanism of action. Uh, so hopefully this uh, will go into uh, conditional approval uh, uh, next year. Uh, thank you to the uh, uh, expertise that we have developed here uh, in extreme engineering T cells. So we have transferred the technology for uh, and developed further the technology for retro and for lenti into lymphocyte and stem cells, uh, and hematopoietic stem cells. Here I will show you very quickly only uh, remind actually because I don't have the time to show you the data. Uh, of uh, the most important studies. This is the ADA deficient skid I made reference before. I'm sure you are familiar with this approach. Uh, uh, CD34 cells are extracted, purified, activated, pre-stimulated with cytokines, uh, transduced and reinfused. Uh, Alessandro Aiuti, who took over the uh, project when I took the responsibility in MOLMED, uh, published uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine the results of the first uh, 12 uh, children with essentially 90% uh, uh, cure of the uh, um, disease. Uh, uh, GlaxoSmithKline uh, uh, took the rights from the Teleton Foundation who funded all uh, uh, the studies through the year uh, uh, and it's uh, uh, going to take this into the market. Uh, based on, uh, on this progress, uh, uh, we, are, we have signed an agreement with GlaxoSmithKline for the uh, subsequent phases uh, of uh, this project into the market and with the Teleton Foundation uh, shortly after that for a series of diseases, uh, in particular metachromatic leukodystrophy and viscodotry syndrome. And uh, those of you who have followed uh, the field uh, um, probably know that in science, back-to-back uh, -to -back were published uh, the two results by Alessandra Biffi and again Alessandra Iuti for MLD and uh, for WOS with uh, compelling clinical results. We have uh, to support all this a dedicated uh, uh, facility. 
uh, formally authorized in-house GMP manufacturing since 2003. As the drug company is able to uh, release uh, uh, all uh, uh, these uh, therapeutics uh, from vectors uh, to uh, genetically engineered cells. And since we realize that uh, uh, this uh, is destined to uh, continuously grow, we are working on an additional number of diseases, including beta thalassemia, which obviously will represent significant numbers, uh, as well as the follow-on of TK3 stage gene uh, for uh, CAR and T-cell receptor. For this, we are building a new facility that will be operational in 2015, uh, 15 additional suites for gene therapy and cell therapy, more than 300% uh, uh, increase uh, in vector production capacity and 200% uh, uh, transduction capacity. Hopefully, with this, we will be able uh, to support the, this growing market. To make a short reference to the previous session, who is going to pay for all of this, nobody knows exactly, but uh, hopefully we will find someone. <laughs>